Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for morning prayer on Friday the 10th of December. It's 8 o'clock and we're using the Church of England's Common Worship daily prayer material for Advent, which may be found online at the Church's website, Arima's Daily Prayer. One can download apps for Apple or Android devices or the other offline version of the book. You'll find morning prayer Advent during morning and evening in morning and evening prayer during the seasons towards the beginning after prayer during the day. There are two sections of that also. You're very welcome to join me in person in the building, 8 and 6 every day, except Monday. We do traditional communion on Sunday morning and a said even song with hymns in the evening at 6 on the Sunday. You can join via Zoom. The codes for that are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We live stream on the Facebook page and I upload the audio um, in about an hour's time. will be to my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. So there are a number of different ways that you can engage with us. It's also an ember day. So if I remember, I might use a prayer for ministry towards the end <coughs> of our service as the collect. Ember comes from quatember or uh, quarter days, which traditionally are used um, as opportunities to pray for God's ministry in the church. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion... The dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 24 presented here as a song of the King's glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms are at the back of the book, and it is to this Psalter that we now turn. Psalms 85 and 86 are those appointed this morning. We open and close each with a refrain, saying the glory be as we return to the refrain in conclusion. And I'll leave it to you whether you listen to me reading it straight through, whether you join in reading it alongside, whether you restrict yourselves to the even-numbered verses, as might be the case. 
if we were doing it in person, as it were. And if you'd like to use the prayers that follow the Psalms, we may do that again as we please. But I'll pause briefly in silence so we can contemplate as we will. Psalms 85 and 86, the back of the book in the Psalter, or scrolling on if you're following electronically. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Lord, you were gracious to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the offence of your people and covered all their sins. You laid aside all your fury and turned from your wrathful indignation. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you stretch out your wrath from one generation to another? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and listen to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my distress I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor any works like yours. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wonderful things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. It's my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me, for you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. O God, the proud rise up against me, and a ruthless horde seek after my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favour, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, the song of the wilderness, or turning back to morning prayer during Advent for the same. We'll read it as we did the psalm. A song of the wilderness. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not, your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, 
and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Our first Bible reading is Isaiah 33, the first 22 verses. Isaiah is in the Hebrew Scriptures, major prophet towards the end. So if you turn about half to two-thirds of the way through and the flick towards the back, it should fall open. Spell I-S-A-I-A-H if you're looking it up in an index. You're looking for the large numbers 33 at the head of the paragraph is the chapter number, Isaiah 33. And we start at the beginning. If you're following online, it's just before the canticle we've read a moment ago. Ah, you destroyer, you yourself have not been destroyed, you treacherous one with whom no one has dealt treacherously. When you have ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. And when you have stopped dealing treacherously, you will be dealt with treacherously. O Lord, be gracious to us, we wait for you. Be our arm every morning, our salvation in the time of trouble. The sound of tumult, peoples fled before your majesty, nations scattered. Spoils gathered as the caterpillar gathers, as locusts leap, they leapt upon it. The Lord is exalted, he dwells on high. He fills Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the stability of your times, abundance of salvation, wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Listen the valiant cry in the streets, the envoys of peace weep bitterly, the highways are deserted, travellers have left the road, the treaty is broken, its oaths are despised, its obligation is disregarded, the land mourns and languishes, Lebanon is confounded and withers away, Sharon is like a desert, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will arise, says the Lord, now I will lift myself up, now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff, you bring forth stubble, your breath is a fire that will consume you, and the peoples will be as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear you who are far away what, have I, what I have done, and you who are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid, trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can live with the devouring fire? Who among us can live with everlasting flames? Those who walk righteously and see, speak uprightly, who despise the gain of oppression, who wave away a bribe instead of accepting it who stop their ears from hearing of bloodshed and shut their eyes from looking on evil. They will live on the heights, their refuge will be the fortresses of rocks, their food will be supplied, their water assured. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will behold a land that stretches far away. Your mind will muse on the terror. Where is the one who counted? Where is the one who weighed the tribute? Where is the one who counted the towers? No longer will you see the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech that you cannot understand, stammering in a language that you cannot understand. Look on Zion, the city of our appointed festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be pulled up, and none of whose ropes will be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor stately ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our ruler, the Lord is our king. He will save us. So this is fairly typical of the first part of Isaiah where the writer here is encouraging God's people, demanding, scaring God's people into recognising the true religion as he saw it. And uh, it's one of those confusing passages because some of it seems to be written um, about what's going to be afterwards, some's written about what's going before. So we've got sort of a, a mixture of threat and promise. And uh, some of this might be directed at God's people, and uh, some of it directed towards the empire that's going to take them into captivity. Um, so when the, we open, are ah, you destroy, you have, you, when you have ceased to destroy, you will be destroyed. Is that, are they the ruling elites in, amongst the uh, Jewish people, the Hebrews, um, who are not looking after the poor, who are not worshipping God? Or is it the people who God is sending, the uh, Chaldeans, if that's who they are, the Babylonians at least, um, that's the main city where they're taken to. Um, maybe the writer here is speaking about them. Once they have done their destroying, they will be destroyed too. So it probably sounds a little bit uh, more likely to me that that's what that first paragraph is, who the first paragraph is pointing to. But then we're told that in due course, God will be exalted, filling Zion with justice and righteousness, and will be the stability of their times. And uh, 
towards the end, there's a re- repeat of that sort of idea. The Lord in majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams. Of course, they live in semi-arid country, and so when they live with God, the weather is right, and uh, the rains come in due season, and so they can sow and uh, reap uh, their various different uh, harvests through the year. Whereas if they don't follow God's word, then effectively climate change breaks everything down and uh, they're no longer able to farm as they used to. But as we read through, there are verses of uh, oaths being despised, obligations disregarded, uh, verses of God raising God's self up, I will be exalted, I will lift myself up. Sinners in Zion are afraid, trembling has seized the godless. So one way or another, whether we are amongst God's people or whether we are against God's people, we are all under God in the end and uh, God will raise God's self up and uh, promote justice both amongst those whom he has chosen who are not living well and those that he sets up against us to try us, to test us and challenge us and uh, in the words of Isaiah to punish us, to refine us that they in their turn will get their just deserts. So to Matthew 15, our second reading, opening the second covenant or Greek scripture, Matthew 15 from 29. Uh, So if you're following online, scroll past the canticle we read earlier. And uh, if you're following in a book, you'll need to find two thirds of the way through the beginning of the second covenant Greek Greek scripture, also known as the New Testament. It opens with Matthew, large number 15 at the head of the paragraph is the chapter number. Small numbers in the text are the verses. Matthew 15. From 29. After Jesus had left that place, he passed along the Sea of Galilee and went up the mountain where he sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the maimed, the blind, the mute, and many others. They put them at his feet and he cured them so that the crowd was amazed. And when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed whole, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, how many loaves have you? They said, seven and a few small fish. Then ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. All of them ate and were filled and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full These who had eaten were 4,000 men, besides women and children. After sending away the crowd, he got into the boat, went to the region of Magadan. So a version of a feeding of a multitude, 4,000 here in uh, Matthew. I like it when in scripture we read where he sat down. It just seems very sort of uh, domestic. After Jesus had left that place, he passed along the Sea of Galilee, went up the mountain and sat down. I guess that's resting, stopping, pausing for breath. After we have exerted ourselves, may we take uh, God's lead and uh, rest. When he, it was discovered where he was, great crowds nevertheless gathered around and he healed them. And this list is uh, of the messianic miracles, healing miracles in that They are, in a very pure and godly sense of the word, double entendres. They are people who don't know what they're talking about. might be described as being mute or dumb, but people who actually physically can't speak, having their their mouths and their their airwaves or whatever, their pipes, their voice box and whatever, whatever restores so that they can speak. Those who are maimed, those who are broken by life, those who are physically ill or sick, not just in body but in spirit, in faith, the lame not making any progress in our relationship with God, as well as those who actually physically aren't able to use legs or balance, for example, and the blind. Likewise, all these are restored by being in the presence of Jesus as Jesus sits, being in the presence of Jesus in nature, being in the presence of Jesus, perhaps in worship, we could argue, as he is up the mountain, mountain tops were places of worship, albeit unauthorised. And Jesus says, what are we going to do with these people? They come to him for help and then they eat and drink miraculously. And uh, in John, this story is provided and interpreted as being uh, a metaphor for Holy Communion, the Mass, the breaking of bread. 
as God feeds us in word and sacrament and feeds the community in which these celebrations take place simply by virtue of them happening there. And it's miraculous. We don't understand how we are sustained. We just know those that partake. We just know that we are. And so these people don't necessarily know that there were only however many seven loaves and a few fish in the beginning. They will have known there was a great deal gathered up afterwards. And uh, interesting here that there are seven loaves out and seven baskets back elsewhere. There are different numbers and people spend a lot of time attributing those numbers to five books of the law, for example, the two covenants, the 12 disciples and so on and so forth. Seven is God's number. So that's fairly straightforward. Seven loaves out, seven baskets back. Then he sends the crowd away and goes to Magadan. After all that, after all the high points, after all the miracles, after all the excitement, things do move on. Thinking of coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration immediately into mission and ministry. May God sustain and enable us to persevere and to keep going and to sit down to the responsory back in morning prayer during Advent. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. The Song of Zechariah Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Let us pray. Saviour, sacrifice, seal, three in one, one in three. As you lay down your life for us, so we lay down our lives for you. We thank you for that great transaction in that as we give up, you give us. And we will never be able to give more than we receive from you. We thank you for that miracle. We thank you that you break bread and share it with us. And that the remnant pressed down, shaken together and running over is more than we can ask or imagine. We thank you for that extraordinary promise, covenant, miracle. We thank you that we are part of it. May we not be faithless, may we distribute with generosity to those around us. Ourselves, our knowledge, our gifts, your grace, your mercy, the people you have made us to be, that you may be glorified and exalted, and that the place where you are in us as your living stones may be places of water, springs, rivers, deep and wide, bringing cleansing, healing, nurture. We pray for those who could do with your release, your redemption, that great exchange and provision. Those who are oppressed, poor, sick, broken, hurting, blind, hopeless. Those who are struggling that others may have peace in the military, in medical services, in prisons. We pray that you will provide for them. We turn then to my prayer feed, World Prayer News, International Fellowship of Evangelical Students. 
We praise God for their work in the Solomon Islands and for a local church who has provided, which has provided funding for the movement to take on staff for the first time. We pray new staff members to be able to inspire and train Christian students to share Christ with their course mates and disciple new believers. An organisation that was very formative for me when I went to Agricultural College in uh, Y, 89 to 92, doing my environmental degree. World Human Rights Day uh, from uh, Christian Action Research and Education. Thank you, Lord, that the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, inspired by biblical truths and values, has continued to bring justice, equality and liberty to billions of people who intercede for those who still suffer oppression to be set free. From Green Christian, as the dust settles after the COP26, campaigner Alex Bradbury explains how initiatives like the Climate and Ecological Emergency Bill must now fill the void between pledges and action. There is rightly an outcry at the summit's outcomes among civil society actors, from the scientists Salimul Hook and Sarah Shaw at Friends of the Earth, International War on Want director Assad Remen, the Tongan activist Elizabeth Kite and former Irish President Mary Robinson, Key criticisms include the inadequacy of emissions reduction pledges made in the run-up to the conference, which put the world on track for 2.4 degrees of heating. The fact that richer countries continue to pay mere lip service to the notion of loss and damage. Not only does the CEE bill plug the gap between promise and policy in the UK, but it also massively raises the bar internationally with uh, non-negotiable proposals around ending the exploitation of fossil fuels, protecting the livelihoods of workers in high emissions industries and enshrining in law, the principle that global responsibility for damage should lie with those causing it. We pray that that bill really is established um, in law in our land. It seems uh, reasonably unlikely, but I pray that it uh, is and that it is uh, worth enacting and that we as um, citizens, voters, consumers will support its efforts and its spirit in our benefit cycle of prayer. Today we pray for <coughs> our voluntary organisations, community groups and uh, families, friends and neighbours. We thank you for the way that uh, these groups work so well in Halesworth, integrated and providing fluid and inclusive offers of help and support from uh, Coffee Caravan and uh, the Dementia Carers Trust through Pear Tree and the Community Larder, uh, Food Bank, Men's Shed, and others, as well as perhaps arguably more formal organisations like um, Women's Institute, uh, MenCap, and uh, other opportunities people have to get together, to, to share, to learn, to eat. We thank you for all of these and all the people whose lives they touch. And we ask that you bless them and enable them to stay safe and uh, keep going in these times where restrictions are up again ever so slightly. We pray that we will be sensible. We thank you for our people today, giving thanks for the church wardens in our uh, St. Michael group. Cookley St. Michael, their warden Jane, St. Margaret's Haveringham Camilla, uh, St. Mary's Huntingfield Emma, and St. Mary's Walpole Kevin and Lee, I think they are. We pray too for the others on their um, other offices and their PCCs, their treasurer and secretaries, their uh, other PCC members, those in the electoral role, those in the congregations and those in their communities. The role in Cookley is, includes Roy, Robert, Katrina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan and Alan and Dooney. Uh, just the one I know of in Hellingham, Janice and Huntingfield. Uh, David, generally Susan, David, Marion, Patrick, Sally Ann, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney and Sue. We pray your blessings on these and those that we have, I haven't got names for. We ask they'll be encouraged and enabled, empowered, in service towards you, from you, towards their community, in their places, that, again, there may be excess and running over of blessing in those places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as he had a medialist, he first in Yansman for Shinsoko, which Mahafes and Mesmeresha, the free was on the Alish, Masanya Gasamish or so on, or to have a Yamas Maharasha. Jerry Miss Nurus Nasiri Mahasan Kastes and Maloyo for Nosham Circulation with him as near the Kashnas for Nosmohoshun Circulation with Yara Mahasa Kriash, but for Hesamish, 
Kuningas antoi ihmisten pyysi ilmoittamaan juuri jonkavaikaisen hätäällä tiedon. Sen sormat ja hätä sinne sarakeli ja maan aivan hätäpäis. Hän tuli joku toisen filmin asana, joku sanoista filmin, että pitää hän sanoa joku toisen filmin asana. Hän menee julistaa joku tiedon, missä hän ei lähti filmin kuin hätä sahua. Hän tuli pyysi antaa ihmisten pyysi matkaa minua fonaa sinne kuusta filmin hädiäksi. Hän tuli filmin asana joku filmin asana, 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 joku on ehdikin myös se, että julosti huomioon, kun vahva kerran ja vensi sen käsin mättä julosti huomioon, jos koko julosti vaan ja näkyy vensi päätä julosti huomioon. The Advent Collect from the book Almighty God give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.